it's Matt, Blackest Garage. And today I want to talk LS swapping on a 67 to 69 Camaro first gen, or if I recall correctly, a 68 to 74 Chevrolet Nova. Everything should intermingle between those. If I'm incorrect, I'll correct it right here across the bottom of the video, you know, that thing. So here's a 67 Camaro, had an LS in it, as you just saw on the channel, if you hadn't, it's on the channel. We deleted the LS, and here's your sneak peek of what's coming for it. All right, next, you'll need an LS-based engine. So I don't have a complete one here at this moment, but here's one. This is a 6-liter uh, LQ4. I believe this one's out of an 05 Tahoe, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But any LS-based engine, 4.8, 5.3, 6.0, 6.2, 6 they all will do a very similar set. What I'm basically going over for all the parts I'm going to post is going to be a 99 to 07 LS based engine. So 4.8, 5.3, 6.0, uh, you know, LS1, LS6, LQ4, LQ9, um, LM7. There's plenty of them, but that pretty much covers the big portion. Now, next, we'll talk parts. So as you see, there's a whole bushel of parts out here. Everything that's sitting here came off this car except for that oil pan. That's a brand new oil pan for the new engine over there. So, starting with oil pan, that's the first thing you're going to do. Put this oil pan on your motor. This is a GM muscle car style oil pan. It fits everything up to about, I think up to a 6.2. Anything bigger than that, you'll have to have a different pan because this one's not clearance for it. But, so, when you buy this pan, everything... Before I get too deep into this, I will say... All the part numbers and links for every item sitting here, and if I miss anything, will be in the description, start to finish of what you should need to put an LS in a 67 to 69 Camaro or the Nova, like I said before. So now let's move right back over here. So when you buy this pan, this pan is an eBay pan. You can buy the same exact setup from Summit. I bought this one on eBay. It comes with a pan, bolts, gasket, Windows tray, dipstick, and tube, and pickup tube. So this kit is everything you need to put a fresh oil pan, dipstick, oil pan gasket, all that stuff on your engine. Now, next, what we're gonna move over to is motor mounts. So you got LS swap adapter plates and small block Chevrolet engine mounts. As my car was a factory small block car, and has small block frame stands. So this is actually the original mount off the car. You can tell they're kind of grungy and old and beat up, but they work. So then you got your LS adapter plates. So what you do is you'll bolt your engine mount to your LS adapter plate, similar to that. I can't really line the holes up too well at this angle, but there you go. It'll bolt on just like this. And then the motor sets in the car. Okay. So now you have the motor ready to go in the car with mounts and adapter plates on it and an oil pan. Next, what you'll need is a transmission. I used a 2005 Chevrolet truck, two-wheel drive, 4L60E. Okay, so in that process, it's basically the same as doing a 700R swap on a small block, a big block, or whatever in a Camaro. Because all you really have to do for it is when you take your engine and trans out, or if you don't have one, if you have a factory cross member, you put the transmission in with a factory turbo 350 engine mount from 67 to 69 Camaros. I think it ran, actually, I think that mount ran all the way up into the 80s, but that's a whole different story. So you'll run across, you'll run the factory cross member and move the front. So all you'll do is you'll slide it back about four inches and you'll see the front two bolt holes on the cross member will line up to where the original two rear bolt holes were on the cross member. So that will get the cross member in the car and then you'll have to drill two holes at the back to put the two rear bolts in and now the motor and trans is bolted in the car steady okay so next what you'll need is headers or an exhaust system i guess so here's your headers these particular headers are speed engineering i believe i bought these directly through speed engineering these have about uh, two hours of runtime on them you can see they're turning blue, but that's okay. They look good still. They're in great shape. None of the welds leaked. That's that. 
Next, now you have, an, you have headers on your car, oil pan, engine mounts, trans mount. So engine trans is in the car, bolted up, done. Now, you'll need a wiring harness. Yes, this looks scary. I promise it's not near as bad as it looks. Now, for this, depending on what intake you're running. If you're running a factory truck intake, you'll have to have adapters for these. When you buy these harnesses, this is also an eBay harness. When you buy these harnesses, they have an option for what type of injector you're running. All you have to do is tell them what vehicle your, in your injectors or intake come off of, and they'll send the right adapters. It's, it's easy. So for me, I had an LS1, or LS1 fuel rails with LS1 injectors on an LS6 intake. So I was able to use EV1 or car style injectors, which is what these harnesses come set up for. So there's that, that's easy. There's a few other plugs on this thing. This thing comes with a big, with a big manual, tells you what every, every wire is, every plug. And then there's like five wires that you have to hook up power to, one ignition power, one main power, which runs straight to the starter. So you don't have to run it to your battery and two grounds. So four wires and your motor will run in your car. Now this harness is set up for 411 PCM right there. So the 411 PCM, I believe was ran from 03 to 07, but you can use anything from 99 to 07 that had a 5.3, a 4.8, a 5.3 or a 6.0 in it with this harness for sure. There's probably other years at cross, but I know those work. So now you have a motor in the car. It'll crank and run with your harness and your computer. You need a cooling system. So let's move to the cooling system. For me, I used a replacement big block Chevy radiator. This is also an eBay unit. I don't know if I'll be able to find this exact one on eBay anymore because I bought this one or did I buy it? I don't know. Anyway, it was given or bought for me years and years ago, probably eight years ago on eBay. This is a big block Chevy full core radiator. And if it was an LS radiator, it would either have a sensor bung, I mean a bung here or a bung here for your steam port. On my setup specifically, I ran a full F body accessory drive set. I'll show you a picture or maybe a video if I have it of what that looked like on my particular car. So what I did was I drilled and tapped the water pump with a fitting for the steam port. It's pretty easy, very simple, but it is one extra step if you buy a radiator or if you already see in my case, I already had the radiator for it. So it wasn't that I wanted, I just didn't want to waste money and buy a new radiator. That's all it boiled down to. So I have a nice radiator. Why not use it? If you buy, a replacement LS radiator, it'll have a sensor bung right here, you know, in this area, and you'll just run your steam liner right here. So that's what I actually suggest if you don't already have a nice radiator. If you do, you can do it my way. Now, radiator, oil pan, headers, wiring harness, computer, cooling system. So your cooling system requires radiator hoses. So this is the hose I used for the lower hose on my car. And the part number is going to be a tail pain to read, but it's still there. And I'll put it in the link description as well. And this hose is actually a hair shorter than what it was. I think it's about an inch and a half shorter. When I got it, I had to cut just a little bit off. So it was perfect fit. Then you have this hose. So this hose here looks ex exactly like this when you get it. But it's got a plastic adapter fitting right here about this long. And all you do is you cut on the edge of that adapter fitting as tight as you can get to it. And you have a good hose for your upper hose when using a F-body water pump. See, this hose is specifically for an F-body pump because it goes straight into the pump. If you're using a truck pump, your, ho your radiator hose is going to have to come in at this angle like this. So I don't know how I'll be able to show this. There you go. And this hose won't be long enough because it's actually going to have to go over that way and then hook on. So for me, I don't know the truck hose numbers. You have to just kind of inspect that one. But if you're using an F body pump, like I was, this is the hose. Now, I mean, that pretty much goes over all the items. The only other thing that I know for sure you'll have to do 
right off the top of my head, is shorten the drive shaft. So if you had a factory turbo 350 car and the drive shaft's still factory, your drive shaft will have to be shortened that approximate three and a half to four inches that you had to slide that crossmember back because that's how much longer the 4L60 is. Now, having said that, if you decide to use a turbo 350 in these cars, it works with an adapter bracket. All you have to do is put an adapter between the flywheel and the crank, sorry, the flex plate and the crankshaft, and then your turbo 350 bolts directly to your LF, missing one bolt hole because it goes into a water jacket. So you only have five. People race them like that. There's no problem. So don't you can ignore that. It's not a big deal. So uh, these are extremely easy swaps to do, but you know that pretty much covers it, I guess, for parts. I can't think of anything else I'm missing. Well, surprise, surprise, I forgot something. So let's bring you in before we do, before we shoot the end of this video. On these cars, we also need a fuel system because uh, it ain't gonna run off of nothing because once you pull the small block Chevy out of it, you ain't got no fuel system in them up because you got a fuel tank, got some naked lines that run the front and no pump. So here's what you need. All right, and we're into the car. So here's the things we forgot. High pressure fuel system. In this case, this is the tank sink fuel kit. So it's a tank sink kit with a Walbrow 255 pump and a fuel sending unit. I don't remember the, the ohm specs or anything. It's factory ohm specs for this car. And then a Corvette fuel filter regulator right here. As you see, you got high pressure comes in here, return back to the tank immediately. And then low pressure here out to the fuel pump. I mean, out to the engine. So there you go. That there's how you get your high pressure to the front of the top, front of the front of the car. It'll send 58 psi with this particular setup here, and it keeps you from having to return a fuel line from the front of the car all the way back here to the back. And it gives you a fuel filter all at once that can be replaced at any local parts store after you get the setup done. So. And uh, quite obviously, I forgot to hook this back up. This is a fuel filter, it looks like, that I was supposed to mount here and then run up there above the rear end housing for a roller of a valve. So, probably need to finish that at some point. But, there you go. That should be the last thing. Um, if you use this wiring harness right here, you'll need these O2 sensors. This is a pair of Denso sensors for, I believe, a 98 to O2. 98 to 02 Camaro or Firebird with LS1. I will double check that and I, like I said, links in description. Everything. So for now, as always, if you like the video, like it, share, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions about it, let me know. I'll, I uh, answer all comments, questions, concerns, thoughts. I read them all. I answer every one of them. So uh, for now, I guess uh, here's where we're headed with this. And uh, I hope y'all have enjoyed it. If you have, like I said, do the things. Later.